I feel like I need catchy theme music. This is a channel dedicated to music, songwriting, arrangement, production, gear, instruments, you name it. We're going to talk about it here. So I figured what better way to start a channel than the room behind us that we're going to spend a ton of time in, hopefully. We go take a tour and check it out. I'm going to show you before pictures, what it was before it looked like what it does right now, which it actually looks pretty good in the camera, right? Anyway, um, I'm going to take you through and show you how I built it. And we're going to start with some tips on making the room sound good. And we're also going to talk about some obstacles and things that I had to overcome in this room to make it what it is today. So let's check out the studio. Hey, y'all. Thanks for coming and checking out my studio. This has been a long time coming. We bought this house back in April or May, and I don't think I got to start working on it till about June. This was basically just a concrete slab. There was no framing, nothing. Just slab walls, slab floor, and a basement. So let's start by talking about the absorption in the room. If you notice, 180 degrees of broadband absorption in these fabric walls. Push in on it, right? This is not Guilford of Maine. I ain't balling like that. This is some Hoppy Lobby. <laughs> but the important part is that it's breathable fabric. If you can hold the fabric up and breathe through it and feel your breath on your hand, that's pretty much the thumbs up that it's going to work really well for this. Up above the mix position, there is a six inch deep cloud with a six inch air gap. And its measurements are six feet wide by four feet deep. And that really, really helps control the sound right above where you're mixing. In the corners, I know we're black on black in here. But those are bass traps, and they're actually gobos. They are 9 feet tall by 24 inches wide and 6 inches deep. And then you have the additional 9 inches of insulation in the fabric walls behind. And you have an air gap of like 12 inches. So it basically goes through 6 inches, a 12-inch air gap, and then 9 inches of absorption before it gets to uh, the concrete. So pretty awesome. Um, the base really hasn't been an issue here. Actually, if anything, I almost think I need more, oddly, um, up in the mix position, but it's been really, really accurate for the most part. Um, to the left and to the right of those monitors, again, that's just more broadband absorption. Over here on the solid surface wall, you've got the 16 by 48 inch broadband absorbers and these actually are mounted with brackets that give it about an inch air gap maybe a little bit more than an inch air gap on these my wife was awesome and she wrapped all of these panels and the nine foot gobos for me and she's meticulous so it turned out great of course everything she does turns out great one thing i almost missed when we we're talking about absorption a rug if you have solid surface floors like I do down here. Even with all the absorption in the room, when I was listening to music or I clap in the room, you get this really, really weird um, flutter echo, but it almost had like a very high, like mid high range noise. And as soon as I put the, the rug down, um, it got rid of all that. So just one other thing to, to mention before we go into gear, let's talk about the instruments in the room. Um, in the back room, I have a Yamaha um, mahogany drum set. And then over here, I have the guitars. So on the left, this is an American Stratocaster by Fender. Great guitar. And on the right over here, we have a Mexican Telecaster. This is my favorite guitar, especially doing like pop country and country music. Like you can't go without a Telecaster. You got to have one. 
and honestly, like my idea was that I wanted to have basically everything you could possibly need. If somebody wants to come in here and do a record, like they have all the uh, instruments that they would possibly need. So you got the Strat, you got the Tele, and then we have a 2003 Les Paul uh, custom as well but it's actually getting set up right now. So it's not on the wall, but that one is, is also always in the studio and available for anybody to use down here for bass guitar. We got the classic. Um, this is the 60th anniversary, uh, Fender P bass. This is an American made one. So awesome quality instrument. I think it's probably the best bass for recording. Honestly, it's super versatile. They sound amazing. For the amps, I have this 35 watt orange amp. And then over here, this is the Fender Bassman, uh, the TV10. It's a tube bass amp. It sounds great. It looks awesome. My wife and I were kind of trying to figure out what we wanted to do with this seating area. And we took the handle off of it, put a tray on it, and it actually works really well as like a little table to set drinks on and stuff. Uh, but it also is a phenomenal bass amp. So. Then for the studio monitors, we have the Kali Audio LP6s. Those have been great to me, but I do want to up, upgrade to a three-way monitor at some point. And I'm looking at the Barefoot or the Focals. And I would love to get people's opinion on that, um, which ones they prefer and why. So put that in the comments below. My MIDI controllers is Akai Advanced 49 Simulated Keys. It's already mapped out for Logic. This thing is a workhorse. Love it. I've had it for many years now. Um, they're great. They do a little bit of everything. The desk is actually a custom-built desk by myself. And there's an Italian company. I saw it on Instagram, the, the picture of this desk. And I went on their website, and they had all the dimensions listed out. So I just decided I didn't want to spend $4,000 and I made the desk myself. This cost me $185 and a lot of time, but it turned out really, really good. I think I built it in like a weekend, honestly. It wasn't too bad, but I did do some custom stuff. I wanted to accommodate my gear like perfectly. Um, so basically the depth of the armrest is the same size as my controller. That was intentional and it's all wrapped um, and leather and stuffed and padded. So if you lean on it, you're good to go. As we sit down here in the studio for many hours, um, you're gonna end up leaning on that thing and you want it to be sturdy and you want it to be comfortable. The bridge back here where the monitors sit on is also leather wrapped. I had some extra and I was like, hey, this would be a nice touch. And it, it cleans off really easy. It looks really professional and yeah, the desk is awesome. I couldn't be happier with it. I'll never take it out of here. It's a bear to put together and it's humongous and it's solid maple. Um, so I didn't have to buy some MDF junk that cost me $4,000. Solid maple desk cost me one hundred and eighty-five. dollars um, So definitely do that. Let's talk about what is in my rack. First of all, the brains of the operation is a Mac Mini. Whole studio runs on that. And then over here, the interface that I use is the Antelope Audio Discrete 8 Pro Synergy Core. This thing is awesome. I'm still learning it. It's fairly new. Um, I was running like a PreSonus one before. And when I did the studio, I said I wanted to upgrade. Mainly because the conversion on these are supposed to be incredible. And so far, the recordings I've done sound um, really, really good. So I'm enjoying it. In my 500 series rack, this is really how I got into analog. We have the Fredenstein Bento 6S. It's been a really good chassis for the money. And the first two things I bought were these SSL 6 chans. They're great. You get basically two small channel strips because they're a preamp, they're a compressor, and they're an EQ, and they work good on everything. Um, they have the classic SSL sound, a little bit of grit, but also a very clean preamp. So um, anybody that's ever used SSL stuff, it just has like a certain thing that it does. And these definitely do that. 
the SSL Ultraviolet EQ. I feel like SSL is known for its EQs and this is no exception. It is awesome. Um, I use it on a lot of stuff all the time. The DBX 560A is just a 500 series version of their 160. It's really, really reasonably priced and it's super versatile. You can use it on drums. I put on vocals um, in combination with um, some of the other gear we'll talk about and it's incredible. I, I love that thing. The newest addition to my rack is this here, this IGS Photon 500. What this is, is the basically a 500 series single U version of a LA-2A. And this goes for about a thousand bucks. I have not seen um, any real reviews on it. I think there's like one EDM review on it where it's just drums going through it. But on vocals, this thing is killer. Um, and it has way more versatility than what the normal plug-in for a LA-2A is. Um, there's a lot of options. You can actually select the ratio as well as the peak reduction. So that's kind of cool. And then there's these London and New York modes that just sound slightly different. Up here, you have the Warm Audio WA76. This is basically a copy of the Yuri 1176. Um, but anybody who says these aren't great is just hating because they actually sound incredible. Up here, I have the S patch by Samson. Everybody that I respect and watch the videos on uses that thing. So I went ahead and bought it. It is super convenient and um, it works really well. Above that, you have the Art P16. And this is basically uh, a patch bay for just all my preamps. So the first two channels are SSL and then three through eight are the back six preamps for my um, antelope audio. Uh, interface and then number nine goes over here to this guy which is my universal audio 710 this is a solid state or a tube preamp whichever you prefer or you can actually blend both sounds together which is super cool and i don't know if there's another preamp that does that so it's definitely carved its own path and then up here, um, this is just our power conditioner. This is the Art Power Conditioner SP 4x4, um, just to protect all your gear when it's in the rack. One other thing that I think deserves a shout out is in the back here, it's really hard to see because I got this little shelf I built and there is an Arturia X8 and that just gives me eight additional inputs. And the reason that's cool is if I wanna do drums and I want eight analog preamps and I want to use all of the discrete eight preamps that allows me to do that and they can and you don't have to have like two interfaces which before they made that thing that was pretty much the only option so I love that and then my favorite thing I've purchased recently is this Nectar CS12 that thing is amazing if you are a Logic user you have to buy this it's like three or four hundred dollars and it basically gives you the feel of using analog with stock plugins. So all these knobs here control the settings and they're all mapped out for all of the plugins in Logic and also any Waves plugins, uh, any of the CLA plugins, even my Sound Toy stuff is already mapped out. So, and it, it works incredible. So if you can't afford to buy all this analog gear or you don't like using analog gear, you're just not into that, you should get this because it feels like you're you're using analog gear with plugins. It's amazing. Okay, microphones. This is my favorite. It's the workhorse of the studio. This is a Shure SM7B. I took the windsock off of it because I've seen a lot of people use it this way and supposedly it sounds better. I don't know. I'm trying it out. I like it. I've had this thing for a long time. I use it on guitars, vocals. You can put it on pretty much anything and it just works. Um, pro tip with these, if you look down here, there is a cloud lifter that just gives you 25 dB of extra gain uh, because it is a dynamic mic, so um, it doesn't have a real high output on it. Up here is the Taylor Swift mic. This thing is known um, because Taylor Swift used it on her Fearless album. It is a tube, large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's got eight selectable polar patterns and 
actually sounds really, really good. A buddy of mine used to uh, use it in his studio all the time, and that's what we always used on my vocal. It's basically a clone of the C12, and um, more famously now is like the Elam 251 is kind of a similar mic to this, but you got the box down here, kick that baby on for like 30 minutes, let it get warmed up really good, and then um, that thing sounds really, really nice. So something that was really important to me when I was building the studio was just the overall vibe of the room. I think we really captured something special. I love the black on black. Everything is dark and blacked out. And then you have this really awesome light up here, which when you're in the room, it doesn't really work as well in video, but it kind of just looks like it's floating there because all of the lights face inward and then it's got a matte black frame and then it's just suspended by cables. So it's really, really a cool kind of optical thing when you're inside the room. And then when I kill the lights, I'll show you something neat. I have these ambient lights all the way around the studio. And all these are, is I spent $8 a piece on them. They're these little black, matte black can lights that I got from the hardware store. And then I bought the Philips, um, basically the color change bulbs. You can download an app for them and I can adjust the color to whatever I want it to be. And so whatever mood you're in, whatever inspires you that day, you can set the colors and it just makes it feel warm and comfortable in here. And so I bought a few of those and, and just beam them up on the walls to give it a little bit of ambience. And man, when you're working in here, you can forget how long you've been down here because it's just so inviting. And so that was really important to me. The other thing, if you look above the screen here, you got these dual 24 inch monitors. I wanted everything to be low and away. Um, I didn't want a lot of obstruction on my view because it isn't a large room. And I wanted to be able to see this screen really clear. So like when I'm editing, I just leave on these scenic views all the time on YouTube and just let it cycle through and it goes to the next one, basically a playlist. But being down in like a basement studio, I wanted to have a window to the world. And so what better way? I recessed the TV into the wall and all the wires are, are ran through conduits inside the wall. Well, that's the studio. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me. There's nothing more valuable than your time. And I appreciate you spending that with me. Hopefully I was able to enlighten you on something and hopefully... I can learn something from this too. If you would, just leave a comment below of what did you like or what didn't you like about my studio? You know, what are some things that maybe I could do better? Because I'm always trying to grow. If you could, just like and subscribe uh, to the channel. I'm going to be putting out new content every week. We're going to be doing some really cool things. So make sure that you're checking it out. And yeah, thank you so much for your time, guys. We'll see you soon.